Hi there. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. And uh, three of us are here at this point in time. Christy, Alonzo, and Matt. Hello, hello. Hello. Happy, happy February. Um, those of you watching on YouTube may notice an empty chair and a phantom mic. Ben is on his way. Oh, here's a crazy idea. Let's pod down Ben's mic until he gets Oh, that's oh. a good idea. Hey, look at that. Hippity hoppity, Ben is on his way. Ben is four. Nice, nice try. Ben's Whatever. four. Alonzo is three. I'm one. For those of you playing at home. So, um, <laughs> hippity hoppity, Ben is on his way. He had a shoot this morning. He's got a lunch after, but he's taking time in between to squeeze us in. While he's not here, we're going to start with the movie that he has not seen, which is Miss Bala. What are you looking at, Matt? I don't know. I'm just looking at the board. Okay. All right, cool. So, Miss Bala is a remake of a Mexican film. Matt, you want to tell us about it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Gina Rodriguez plays... Uh, well, I don't know. She ends up being called Miss Bala. Uh, Gloria. She plays Gloria. Gloria is a makeup artist. She's headed down to uh, Tijuana because her friend's running in the Miss Baja pageant. Um, they go to a nightclub to impress the police captain or chief of police that runs the pageant or is heavily involved. And drug dealers attack and take her friend hostage. And she gets involved with the drug dealers and has to do... Terrible things to get her friend back. So this is a remake of a 2011, 2012 yes. film, also called Miss Bala. Right. It was Mexico's entry into the Oscar foreign language category that year. And it was surprisingly good. Like, mm -hmm. given the subject matter, given that it looks kind of like a, you know, noisy, shoot em up action kind of thing, um, it was made with a great deal of elegance and, like... What's happening? Sorry, I just turned off my oh. headphones. It's okay. <laughs> no, you're turning down your own headphones now, Matt. You're uh, two. I, you're no, two. I'm not two. I'm four. This is two. This is two. I'm on my own headphones oh, in four. We are professionals. We're seeing what this is like without uh, the exactly. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Miss, the first Miss Bala was actually surprisingly really good, and there was like an elegance and these beautiful long tracking shots, and the actress who starred in it, Stephanie Sigmund, had this great like low-key badass sexuality about her and you believed her journey and you believed the choices she had to make along the way and it was just surprisingly good for what looks like a grimy B-movie. Right. This and, was uh, not. Our, our friend mm -hmm. Peter de Bruges described this one as the movie that the original went out of its way not to be. I have not seen the original so I can't judge but that I got where he was going. Right. So, now, so Catherine Hardwick directed this. Yes. Which would make you think at the outset that there would be more of an interest in, like, making this woman complex and mm. giving her agency, to use a word that you're fond of, yes. Alonzo. And uh, I really like Gina Rodriguez, but it becomes a very standard kind of, like, shoot 'em up action movie, well, like, I, you know, border I, drug action I, movie. I kept waiting for a scene where we would learn anything about her, apart from the fact that, like, her dad left um, you know, we have that whole scene where Lino, the the cartel guy who's played by... Ismael Cruz Cordova. Who was amazing in Mary Queen of Scots. And I did not recognize him between these two movies. So he's now on my radar of somebody like, oh, that guy. Because he can do a lot of different things. Um, he's very hot. That too. He doesn't, looks like... Doesn't hurt. Remember the hot convict whose mugshot was going yes. around all over the place? Oh, right. He yeah. was like a really light-skinned black guy with gorgeous green eyes. Ismael Cruz Cordova looks like that. Continue. Anyway, he gets this whole scene where he talks about how, like, you know, he was born in Tijuana, and then they moved to Bakersfield when he was six, and he went to high school there, and then they got deported, and he never, he doesn't feel at home in either place, and then it's like, okay, well, that's interesting, but Gloria never gets that much exposition or backstory or anything, so you're kind of plunged into this situation where she's running around trying to keep her friend alive and do all this stuff, but it's sort of like... Do you have friends in Los Angeles? Do you are you connected to anyone on earth apart from this girl you're trying to find? Like who are you? You know, and so that's She's a makeup artist and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really get a whole lot to work with there. And um, you know, the <laughs> I, I I it's I, I, I sent Yolanda Machado to review this for the rap, but I'm glad I did because I was sort of conflicted over the notion of like this movie feels like a collection of stereotypes of movies about Mexicans, you know, because, like, everybody's a drug dealer or an abused woman or a corrupt federal official or whatever. Uh, and it's like, but it's a remake of, an, of, a, of a Mexican movie. Like, that seems to be their fig leaf. But I, I don't know, it's, just, it's still, 
is a little squeaky, especially because in the opening credits, they don't credit the original screenwriter. It right. just says, based on the Spanish language film. Mm. Yeah, that was a weird choice because typically you see something like based on and then the title the of it. Right, right, yeah, or, right. Or based on the title, like you have the title of it, sure. right? This one, yeah, I, like I thought that it moves along well enough, but it, it felt like I was watching highlights of a more interesting show that might show up on Netflix. Um, like the season one recap. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like I thought Gina Rodriguez was good in this. I'd rather see her in something more interesting. And it feels like a lot of stuff is kind of unexplained. Like I didn't get, I didn't realize for a while that like the kid was the friend's son. Like, no, I thought, it's, it's her little brother. It is her little brother. It's her little brother. Yeah, see, I thought that then... It <laughs> not, it no, that's not her kid. That's not Su- okay. Su- Suzu, the, the pageant right. queen who goes missing. That's her little brother. Yeah, mm. yeah see, I was confused because then they started talking about, like... Then they made it sound like it was Suzu's kid halfway through the film, Gl- I thought. Gloria is the godmother. godmother. Right. And right, so look, who's, you are who's, forgiven for being confused because this weird. is not the tightest storytelling. I mean, you're right. Action wise, this movie moves along at a good clip, and Hardwick has that sort of genre sensibility right. where she knows how to make the action scenes work, even if they're lacking sort of character motivation. And like the 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 whole movie is about like how do we put an AR-15 in the hands of Gina Rodriguez? Mm-hmm. Like, that's really all they're building to. Although she manages to kill like four people before that by pure accident. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, There's an intriguing ambiguity for a long time about her character because she seems to have this canny sense of who, whom to align herself with sure, when. Her allegiances. And yeah. she realizes, you know, this person is pretending to be protecting me but is not safe. Neither is this person. Neither is this person. And in every situation, she figures out how to play it and survive. Right. And that's kind of interesting. Like, she's maybe more than a pawn. Maybe she's more than a pawn. But how, as you say, Alonzo, we don't really know a whole lot about her. So right. how does she know how to be this person? Like, yeah. the, the, the developmental arc that would have given that character some oomph is not there. Yeah, because yeah, you're right. I mean, the, 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 the most interesting idea this movie has is like, well, you can't trust... The, the cartel, and you can't trust the DEA, so you are on your own, and you have to sort of figure out how to play against both sides while remaining alive long enough to get your friend out of this situation. But, like, when, we, when the movie opens, for example, she is doing makeup for some fashion show, and she is told, you know, we're not paying you to think. Like, don't, don't bring your own ideas in here. Do it our way. And the rest of the movie is about how she's apparently this really good at manipulating people person. So, like, in that scene... You could have given her a line or two in which she gets the guy to do her idea and make it think it's his idea or something. Well, don't we see her going ahead and doing her own makeup thing anyway with that with the model? And then the designer the guy's likes like, it. All right. Yeah, then he likes it. Oh, is that it. okay? That's what happens. All right. So that part was all also very like. She like does the cheek the way she wants it done, and the guy goes, "Oh, that's good. Keep doing that." Ah, okay. So I okay guess then I ex- take it back. I guess then she's a brilliant manipulator. This is an example that's of her. How the movie shows it. Maybe it's meant to lay the groundwork for her um, thinking for herself. You know, and, and figuring it out in the face of conflict or adversity or whatever. Um, you mentioned also, Alonzo, that she and the hunky cartel leader have this thing in common where, like, they're too Mexican to be American and too American to be Mexican. Right. And that's a really interesting concept to anybody along the border or sure. who is of both you know, backgrounds. But the movie does nothing they with don't, it. They nothing. don't explore that at well, all. And no. that's what's frustrating. Like, you could do something interesting about who's worse, right? The, the cartels or the DEA, right? And, and the first Sicario gets into that, yes. right? But this movie, it's got nothing to say. And not that every movie has to have something to say, but it's its its playing around in such rich territory, and it's just so shallow. Like, there were occasional moments where they sort of touched on that idea, like, where Gina Rodriguez shows up in Tijuana, and she's speaking English, and the little brother keeps bugging her about not speaking Spanish. And it's like, and I... I recognize that situation yeah, you know my parents were, were born in spain and so like i i know that whole thing where like the, around certain relatives you say certain things or you speak in a certain way or you and you deal drugs Spanish, that kind of thing that too <laughs> um but like yeah this movie just drops out like a hot potato also um i said to alonzo walking out of the theater that i was able to understand all the spanish because they're speaking Spanish like Americans speak Spanish. And it wasn't super slangy, and it wasn't super fast. And oh. so I understood it. So that, that maybe is a, a demonstration of how she is an American trying to fit into this land. And so her Spanish is like 
a little uptight. Yeah, but everyone and, and around her speaks like a Rosetta Stone, so that she can be picking it up along the way. <laughs> we all use Babel. Do you like how the chief of police had that one move? He's like, when, with somebody he really likes, he just grabs their ass. Oh, yeah, that's like, true. He does that, pull that one off. That dude lot. was like such, like, call central casting and get me a dirty old man. Right, <laughs> instead of grabbing him by the pussy. Well. He grabs him by the ass. Okay. There you go. Sure um, awesome, so uh, I'm giving it a five. I really wanted to like it more. I like Gina Rodriguez. I like the energy. There's like a, a natural kind of accessible screen presence she brings to this that like, you know, carries us along in mm-hmm. spite of the material. But I wanted more for her, as you say. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I'm also a five. She makes the movie better than it has any right to be. And, and you know, Hardwick is, is like I said, it's good at the is good at the action stuff and good at the, you know, the pacing. But yeah, story. Story-wise and character-wise, this is a big miss. You know, you're, uh, I realized I'm too high on this because the other thing, this movie is it's relatively forgettable. Um, my wife was asking the next day, like, so what was that about? I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's because I've been sick, but you guys see me struggle to describe it. Like, yeah, it's Gina Rodriguez, mm-hmm. and she goes to Mexico, and she shoots people. Like yeah. So wait. So you said six before. Yeah, you want to change yeah, no, six? Five. Okay, okay, so now yeah. we're all five. And, and you five. said this was worse than Syriata. I thought Syriata was much better. Than no, 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 no. No, I said it was worse than Colombiana. Colombiana. I said, no, oh, I said, I said right. it was better than Colombiana. No, Colombiana is much more fun than this. I, it, it, the, the longer, the further away from it I get, at least Colombiana has the courage of its wacky. Yeah, and exactly. Doesn't even have that. So I, I, I I'll take it back. I want right. to mention too. Um, in the original, they incorporate the Miss Baja California pageant into the story a lot more effectively and a lot more frequently. Mm. So in the original, um, the actual pageant queen becomes the badass. Ooh. Becomes like the drug cartel's Ooh. pawn and like fights for survival. In this, she's the makeup artist friend of the pageant queen, but she's forced to then become the pageant queen. And they they take like giant gaps of time away from the pageant where you realize, oh yeah, the movie's called Miss Bala <laughs> because she's meant to be in a pageant, and Bala means bullet in Spanish. And um, and they and don't that could incorporate have been a much it. Funnier scene. Too. And it is in the original. There's oh, like okay. an absurd absurdity to the fact that she is trying to be less and elegant despite the danger like, she's in. I would have loved it where like she would have had to suddenly have a talent. You know, <laughs> and that would have been great. But like if the movie just kind of zips past that part. Yeah, so right, um, she's gonna start doing the, the glass exactly. thing. <laughs> <Just congeniality. laughs> and and then someone's the tea for two or something. And then someone's firing at the glasses and the water explodes in slow motion. Anyway, <laughs> we have the remake figured out. But the last shot in the movie does suggest to you that they are thinking about more oh, Ms. Bala. Yeah. Oh, so she joins the Avengers, right? They are they are thirsty for sequels, but I suspect we're not gonna get any. Who knows? Uh, but if you want to watch the original Ms. Bala, it is available for rent on Amazon. I'm going to watch it this weekend, uh, just if you're interested. All right. So our number is a five. It's at 30% on the tomato meter. Yee. All right. Well, hey, Ray, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for doing that. Please subscribe and give us a thumbs up and tell your friends that uh, this is where What the Flick lives now. And you can follow us at BeFastAllDay at uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.